Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and today we're going to be talking about the future of Pokemon in a way that I've wanted to discuss for quite a while now, and that is how you address routes and wild areas moving forward, whether that's in eventual Diamond and Pearl remakes or in the Generation 9 games, how will Game Freak look to balance the past with routes connecting cities and towns with these new open world locations that we've seen in Sword and Shield? Let's discuss it. So one of the discussions that we've been having internally within the Pokemon community over the last couple years now is what to do about routes and what to do about wild areas. Now it's no secret that in Pokemon Sword and Shield, we started to get some more open world locations added into regions. Now in the Galar region, there are still routes connecting cities and towns. There's a lot of them and a lot of them have incredibly good music and they're detailed and the Pokemon that Game Freak put in these routes really differentiates them from others. I felt that in Sword and Shield the routes were good, and I felt that it actually added a little bit to the game itself. I'm a classic Pokemon guy. I like my routes connecting my towns and cities. I think it's part of the Pokemon formula, and I don't think that it's something that inherently has to change because we've moved forward in the ages. Game design nowadays has moved away from that. A lot of games don't use this similar old classic style RPG formula that they used to do. A lot of them have moved to open world games, look no further than Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and even to a lesser extent, Super Mario Odyssey, which used vast sprawling landscapes for the character to explore. Now, one of those two examples I think is actually more fitting for Pokemon Sword and Shield and future Pokemon games, and that is Super Mario Odyssey. You traveled to different locations throughout the world that Mario is in, and all of them were these big sandbox levels to explore. They weren't totally open. You couldn't go as far as the eye could see. You were blocked and restricted in certain locations, but once you were plopped into the map location you were at, you were free to explore it. That's pretty much what we got with the Galar region wild areas, with the Crown Tundra and with the Isle of Armor. The Crown Tundra and the Isle of Armor grew that concept a little bit more from what the mainland Galar wild areas did, but it was still that same formula. You couldn't go absolutely everywhere, and there were certain things that blocked your path. In Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, if you can see it, you can go to it and you can traverse it in some way. With Link, you were able to climb up mountains, when the weather permitted, of course, and you were able to pretty much go anywhere you could see. In Sword and Shield's wild areas, there are different locations you can't actually access, whether it's just that Game Freak didn't envision them being areas that you could travel to, or if it was for some sort of technical reason, it was just something to look at in the background, or it was a part of the game that was more linear, like a city that you could actually see from a wild area. Now, we also did get the traditional routes, as I mentioned, routes connecting cities and towns, routes connecting different areas, cave systems connecting two different routes. It's classic Pokemon design. Routes are inherently, for a lot of Pokemon's history, very linear. There isn't much diverging paths that you can take. There's smaller sections that aren't totally, that are optional for you to explore, and they give you rewards and items and different goodies. Maybe there's a trainer on that path that gives you a specific item, or that you can battle to fill up a page in your Pokedex. That's always been in Pokemon, and that was here in Sword and Shield as well. And I'm of the opinion that I think Game Freak would be mistaken to fully remove routes from future Pokemon games. I think, and I, I voiced this on Twitter in the lead up to Sword and Shield's release when there's a lot of controversy about this. People saw the wild area, people saw a totally free camera that allowed you to see 360 degrees around your character and said, this is what the future of Pokemon needs to be. This is where Game Freak needs to focus their attention. And I said, listen, Breath of the Wild is my second favorite game of all time, only to Super Mario Galaxy. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey is a fantastic game. The Witcher 3 is another open world game, not on a Nintendo console. Actually, it is on the Switch now. Not, not the best version of it, but it's a game where you can go anywhere your heart desires. And I think there's an appeal to that for Pokemon. The, the anime and the Pokemon manga have basically showed you the world of Pokemon in a way that you don't always get in the games. And I think a lot of people yearn for that explorability, that way for your character to kind of craft their own path and really have it be a more breathing, real feeling world than we sometimes get in the main RPGs. But I think that there's a way that you can bridge that gap, and I actually think Sword and Shield did it well. 
If you were to take the Crown Tundra Wild area and place it in a region replacing what would regularly be a normal route that is more open, you can have these massive explorable wild area locations that you can still work with routes as well. Sinnoh is a good example of this, as is some different locations in Unova. I'll go to Unova first because we've talked a lot about Sinnoh recently. There are some areas in the Unova region which I think are perfect for just simple routes. The pathways between your first town and the second town, those kind of areas, the Pinwheel Forest, for example. Is Pinwheel Forest? Is that Unova? I don't even remember. Those locations, I think, do well for routes. Game Freak can craft essentially what they are. They're levels, but for a Pokemon game. And I think Game Freak can craft a compelling area for you to explore that is more linear. But then we look at a place like the desert, connecting Castelia City and Nimbasa City. That is a massive area. And even in the original games of Black and White and in Black and White 2, it was pretty open for you to explore. Now, of course, it was in pixels and it was in the art style and the style of classic sprite based Pokemon games. But imagine taking an area like that desert and turning it into a crown tundra or an Isle of Armor style open world area. It vastly opens up the gameplay mechanics and the gameplay possibilities for that location. It opens up the amount of time that you're able to spend in that location. And I don't think you lose anything from the classic design when trying to bridge it with a more open world format. Another one that's good and that I've used as an example in previous videos are the snowy northern routes in the Sinnoh region. In the original games, those places are huge, and because of the way the game is designed, it's very clunky and I don't think it's at all presented very well. There are massive patches of space where it's basically your little character in the center of the screen and just snow around him, and maybe a couple trees dotting the landscape, and maybe occasionally you see a trainer on skis uh, moving around that you can battle. I think you can take that and you can upscale it to a more Crown Tundra looking wild area, keeping the charm of what the original game intended, while also bringing in more modern open world formats. I think this is the way that Game Freak can really bridge that route and wild area design uh, issue. Listen. Do I think Game Freak is moving towards a place where they're going to eliminate routes and go for wild areas connecting cities? Ultimately, I think they are. I think that the Crown Tundra, in that the routes, what we would commonly refer to as the routes or the, the wild expanses outside of Freezington, the town in the Crown Tundra, the fact that it seamlessly connects the town and those the surrounding wilderness and mountains, I think is, and the caves itself, is a wink and a nod to Game Freak saying, this is what we're going to be moving towards in the future. This is what we would like to push for. This is what we think Pokemon can evolve into. And listen, I don't totally disagree with it. I think my mind can ultimately be changed on if I think this is the path forward for Game Freak. But I guess as a classic Pokemon fan, as someone who grew up with Generation 3 and Generation 4 specifically, I think there's still a place for routes. I think there's still a place for the kind of gameplay mechanics that routes provide, the breaks in between towns and cities. And I think there's a way that Game Freak can do both and really make it work for the player and really make it work as a modern Pokemon game. I know that a lot of fans are petitioning constantly on social media and on YouTube and talking to their friends saying, imagine a Breath of the Wild Pokemon game where you could go to any gym location you please, any town and city you please, play the story through in any way that you please, and it's an adventure that you craft for yourself. I'm sympathetic to that idea. I don't know if I'm fully there. I think that Game Freak can make the world of Pokemon more open while keeping the classic level design of Pokemon in a way that I think is fitting for modern consoles in a modern generation. With that being said, I want to know what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments section below or on my social media at LinkyYT on everything what you think about the future of Pokemon. And if the audio sounds a little bit different in this video, it's because I just moved back into college. Uh, it's a little bit echoey in this room right now, so we're working on making it sound as good as possible. Just bear with me for a little bit as we make this transition. With that being said, my name has been Linky. My name has been Linky. I have been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.